Co-writers, co-directors, who did more of what and who did less of what? Mike did more of that, of what, and I did less of what. No, we balance. We're balanced. Uh, Mike comes from a post-production background, and I come from more in, in front of the camera background. And um, there were days where I would just hang out. I remember like kicking it with a PA and writing a story. We were working on a story or something in a tent one day, and our producer Albert Berger, who did um, Little Miss Sunshine in Nebraska, came over and he's like, "What are you doing?" And I was like, "Oh, Mike's directing. We were, I was working over here with his PA." And he was like, "Oh." He's like, well, that's my son. And so we all just sat there for a day, and Mike directed that day. But we don't have any uh, – we have no ego about that stuff. We actually don't. <laughs> I'll, I'll say also, like, a lot of the directing, I feel like, happens in the writing process. And so when we sit in a room and we talk about scenes, we know exactly what's going to happen in there. And whether, like, I'm there or Tyler's there, it doesn't matter as long as one of us is there because we have this just brain trust. But – I like that, but but there was one day uh, that we were on a ra on the raft, and it was too small to get both of us on there, and you got the face slapping scene. That's one of my favorite scenes in the movie. I wasn't there for that, and uh, that was all you. It came from you. So. Child cries in that scene too, right? Yeah. yeah. Beautiful scene. Sorry about that. Not to rub up my face or anything. Yeah, not like that. <laughs> it, was a, it was. It was a beautiful scene. I remember seeing. They came, I was watching the monitor, and I was like, "Damn, that dude's that dude's a good director." <laughs> yeah, it's really good. But tell me about the the short y'all created with Zach is kind of like a presentation piece. Like, what was that about, and exactly who got to see it that kind of helped make this the the Mudbound crew, right? Um, well, yeah, Tim Tim and Chris made um, were part oh, of the, the team Mudbound, that, that made Mudbound. I thought you were talking about the movie Mud. Yeah, and I was like, no, that, yes, yeah. Mudbound crew. Yeah. Um, well, when Tyler and I wrote the script for Zach, no one would read it. Like, we didn't have agents or managers or know anybody famous. And people are like, it's going to take me two hours to read that. Like, just no. So we went and shot like a five minute, basically a trailer for the movie that showed that Zach could do the acting job. Tyler played the role of Tyler. And that's really what opened all the doors for us. So we showed that to Albert and Ron, um, our producers, the guys from Mudbound, Chris and Tim. Um, Dave, our producer, helped us shoot it. And Lige helped us as well. So it was actual scenes from the movie. Like there's shots that you... There's shots that are still in the movie. In the trailer. Yeah, in the trailer. Oh, wow, really? That we shot. Mike's on a like was on a jet ski like zipping around with Mike. Sorry, yeah. Mike was on like a jet ski like zipping around with a camera, and I'm like floating on a raft of trash with Zach that we built into the sunset, and that's in the trailer. It's really it's a special shot for me. I love it. Savannah is where y'all shot mostly. Yeah. What was that like? It was beautiful. I really I it was great southern town really friendly people and it felt like we were at summer camp because it's you know it wasn't like we were shooting in LA and everybody could go home at night or even in Dallas and everybody could go home at night we were just all in Savannah yeah. hanging out with each other on on boats yeah going to like barbecue joints and the guy Craig the the, uh, the large fella that was rolls with yellow wolf and John Hawks the guy that calls him at the restaurant yeah yeah but he was just a guy that Worked the barbecue joint, and I was like, that dude's dope. Let's use him. But, like, we, yeah, we were hanging out. Winky, he's in, like, three scenes. The guy, like, that's, like, fighting with Shia that where he works. That guy just worked on a boat. Shia was working on his boat. Was our friend. And we got a lot of local, authentic flavors. Yeah. We just, we were all real family, and if you're in our family, you're in the movie, so. How do you get, so, yeah, that's one side of it. The other side of it is, like, you guys have some incredible A-listers. I mean, I'm guessing some of these may come from the producers, like Bruce Dern. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did Nebraska. Our producers did Nebraska and called Bruce in. Um, our producers. I'm a huge fan of Bruce, though. So yeah. Call Bruce. Mike had been talking about Bruce for a long time. Was he so was excited. Cool. Like, yeah. Hard. And they're like, yeah, I think he's going to do it. Um, and they had made a movie with John Hawks as well. Mm. Big John Hawks fan. Um, he's great, by the way. Yes, isn't he? Wow. So I mean, our. Our whole cast. I'm so part of why it's fun to get out here and talk to people is we've had this. We shot it a while ago now, over a year ago, and it's fun for me to be like I'm so proud of this whole like all the performances. So I'm excited to be like, please come watch, come watch what our guys did. Yeah. Just watch what they did. They're all amazing. Dakota Johnson, Shia LaBeouf, yeah. Thomas Hayden Church, Jake the Snake, Mick Foley. Like yeah. I just think every Yellow performance, Wolf. Yellow Wolf. Yellow I'm so guy. proud of all the performances. Speaking of Yellow Wolf and music contributions in this, yes, I'd love y'all to talk about him, but also 
one of the things I loved, I think y'all wrote the final song. We did, yeah. Tell me what about that too. That's really amazing. I was blown away. I mean, a lot of the music in the movie, um, Tyler and I, when we write, this is going back to the writing question, we'll play music and know what the song is going to be in the scene. So um, Yola Tango, Green Arrow mm -hmm. is in the movie and we wrote to that. And we play it on set. And we play it on set. So it's embedded in the script. It's embedded in the performance. Not actually there, but spiritually. Um, and then the end song, we were working really hard to find something that was a fit. Yeah, we couldn't find what we... We couldn't... Give me a... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we couldn't find uh, an end song that really felt right. Um, and it was one of those moments where it was like... I guess it's... I'm trying to think of like a building thing where you're like, it's the this piece at the top. Like yeah, it's thing. like... And we were like, we need a thing that fits perfectly in there. And you just... We couldn't find it. And then... Um, we have a, a really fantastic friend named Parker Ainsworth who is from Texas. Texas. Austinite. Yeah. Yep, Austinite. And he is so special and such a, a radical, spiritually lifting, beautiful human. I'm a fan of Parker. I love Me too, Parker. yeah. Uh, uh, I was in another band with Parker. Yeah. Uh, and we were we were down to the, to the wire, and I called him, and I was like, hey, can you come over here and bring your guitar? And he was like, yeah, what's up? And he walked in, and I was like, we're writing an end song for this movie. We have three hours. And he was like, kick ass. And we just sat down and just started kind of trying to find it. And I was like, that feels good. Let's go there. And we were talking about words that feel good. And, you know, my, oh, my Lord, I just can't hardly wait. We've been worn down in the hardest ways. The long night's over. And I'm starting to believe I'm not as broken as some made me out to be what makes and just at like really trying to find like words what makes a house a home that speaks to the story like in a lot of ways that song speaks to all the characters which yeah. for us is like a perfect ending is when everything wraps up at the same time you want a bow but not a bow you know what i mean yeah so yeah. that song i think helps all the all the storylines from all the main characters sort of wrap up at the same time been running for so long so when i met you <laughs> that's amazing i can't believe i'll do a little acapella um Speaking of your oh, writing... Oh, we're recording this? Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh. I'm going to get weird now. No, the scene right before, basically, that shrimp boat almost kills the two guys. Yeah. Spoiler, um, alert. Spoiler, Spoiler yeah. alert. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Um, it happens early enough. It's okay. <laughs> Maybe it does kill them. Oh. Maybe it's a, a dream. Maybe this is an, a Christopher Nolan rip. <laughs> it's Inception. It's it is. It's a dream within a dream. It is. Um, there's uh, Zach's lines about... He asked him, am I going to die? And he goes, that's not the question. Yeah. question yeah. is, people going to remember you? And then, yeah, there's good stories to tell about you. Yeah. How do you guys, your writing process, I look, because I was blown away by that line. I was like, oh, I'm hooked. It's funny because I'm like, I say that shit all the time. Yeah. yeah we just, we're those <laughs> kind of guys. Yeah. It's a lot of the stuff we just say in normal conversations. There's stuff we wake up, we have coffee in the morning, and we'll talk about hippie shit. Yeah. <laughs> but also, we're hanging out with Zach when we were writing and like, we were like doing something I forget what we were doing like jumping on and he was like oh I'm not gonna die and I was just like don't be a bitch yes you're gonna die but that doesn't fucking matter we're all dying so like let's have a good time and then I was like ooh that's let's good do that. let's, let's do, do that. that yeah like that let's talk about crabbing and there's like legit crabbing going on you guys crabs, got a legit crabs crabs crabs, 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 crabs. Let me, I gotta talk about this Shia LaBeouf worked on a crab boat every morning for a few hours like before. 3, 30, 3 he, he, he looked like he knew what he was doing. He knew yeah, exactly he what he was doing. He, did. he was a legit crab fisherman in Savannah, Georgia, and he was good at it. Yeah. I had, I had, I had worked on a crab boat when I was younger um, for quite some time and grew up in an environment like that. And I just liked those guys, those blue collar guys, good storytellers, salt of the earth, and thought that was a good character, um, a good place to come from. And when Shia came down, he was like, all right, well, let's, let's, where am I doing it? And we had, I had met a guy, the guy that's in the movie already said, did mm. I tell you that? The guy Winky? Yeah. Winky. Yeah. He was, he just owned a boat down there. He doesn't even, I think he has, doesn't even have a TV. And we were sh doing a scene. I was like, Hey Winky, come here. We're going to do this scene. And he was like, what? We're like, just run it. It's going to be great. And he's so good in it too. But yeah, just wanted it to feel real and wanted. Yeah. Yeah. I also want to jump in because uh, on the yellow wolf question, he actually had worked on a crab boat before as well. No He's way. from the South, yeah, in his real life. So when we, I don't know if you know his music Different or his, crab boats, Alaskan, Alaskan crab boats. Ah, a little colder. But he's, but he's from the South. Harder. And I think um, Hawks and Bernthal did a couple days on the crabbing boat too. I thought Bernthal did. Yeah. 
I'm familiar with Yellow Wolf. Yeah, yeah. me too. It's quality. Gas yeah. is in Alabama. Um, so is there any Tyler, Tyler, is there any connection to the character and you, or is that just you need a I name? Mean, I'll, I'll take this. Yeah, take when, when, we, um, when we started making this movie, we thought we're... That's thought, a good one to take. <laughs> I got this one. We thought we were going to make it for like $10,000, and that Tyler was going to play Tyler, and Zach was going to play Zach, and Dave and I were going to run camera and cut it together. And we couldn't get anybody to give us even a hundred dollars. No. Um, so it kind of it grew from that, but we never changed the names, and it settled in and felt really natural. Um, There's a little part of me that wishes we had changed it though, because it does feel a little like you named. It's like what's the George Foreman? Like you named your, your all, your, all kids. your kids George. So it's, it does feel a little bit like that. It's fine. It's funny because it, it could be that you thought so much about it. You have so much ego that you use the name. Or it could be like, oh, I didn't think about it at all. We didn't even come up with names. That's just what the names were. Well, and it's the other side. It's like almost egoless, which is what I, I think it was. You think that. Yeah. You didn't name Dakota like Tylerina or something like George. Named well, it was Tylerina. Oh, wow. And she asked to change it. That was a good note from her. Yeah, she was like, what if it wasn't Tylerina? And then also uh, Saltwater Redding was named, was named Saltwater Tyler. It was a, <laughs> There's a lot of Tyler's in yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> Where did the wrestling come from? Was that more Zach? Yeah, Zach loves to wrestle. Zach loves wrestling. He just mm -hmm. loves it. And we were like, great, we'll just run with it. Like, We were on a road trip. He, had, um, he was sick one day, and he was laying in bed. And uh, he had a – oh, yeah, thank you. And he had a – check, check. His backpack was open and a bunch of rat wrestling magazines were spilling out. And rat magazines. <laughs> <A bunch> Yellow <laughs> and wrestling. Oh, when, when um, Jake the Snake and Mick Foley showed up on set, Zach lost his shit. In, in the best way. I did too. <laughs> in the best way. In the best way. literally use it that way. Yeah, I know. He's a fan. Fan of wrestling. And that was really authentic for him. Well, I love that you have, you know, Jake the Snake's Texan, uh, Thomas's Texan. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. You have a lot of Texan connections. Yeah. Um, we're... we're, we're I feel like North Carolina and Texas is pretty much like cousins, cousin states. Dave Kiss. Gordon Green. Yep. He went to North Dave Carolina, Gordon. came back. Yep, yeah. exactly. Kiss and cousins. That's Jeff awkward. Nichols, I love. David and Gordon Green. Yeah, Jeff Nichols is a big inspiration. David Gordon Green is. He's back in Austin too. Right. He is. Yeah. He is. Yeah. You guys roll real nice and slow down here. Uh huh. We try. It's you do a good job. It's a little bit faster. Yeah. We're trying to get there. Yeah. We don't yeah. have the the horror stores of Savannah, but no. Uh, I've got to ask boats. Yeah. How did you create their boat? And I don't want to say what happens to it, but yeah, yeah. Like, we, I mean, we see it created in the movie, but like, who created that beautiful boat? Oh, the raft. Yes. Oh, there's a lot of boats, and I was like, oh, all right. All the boats are real, right? Oh yeah, hell yeah. Uh, to be totally honest, uh, I I remember we were we were where I there's a proof. Uh, it was in the proof of concept, so we had written a a, ra a trash raft into the the script and. It was we were gonna shoot something. We were gonna shoot it for the proof of concept, and I just woke up in the morning and I went down there and grabbed a chainsaw and slapped it together like in an hour. We have a friend with a junkyard. Yeah. And we just built it literally on camera and no like way. Yeah. yeah, like forty minutes. Strap some shit. We're pretty handy dudes. Took us like forty minutes. Uh, Nancy Silver. Uh, Does she still have it? Yeah, it's still back behind her house. Yeah. And the and the it's back on Bomb Town Road in Wanchies, North Carolina. Oh, if you want to go wow. find it. Yeah. But yeah, we just built it, and then they had to rebuild it for the movie because they were. We were like, "Hey, check it out! We already built it." Like that. They were like, "That shit is uh, dangerous." We're not, we're not putting Shia LaBeouf on a raft you built in forty minutes. He might get a splinter, yeah. something like that. No, he was down for it. That dude was. He bled for our film, literally and figuratively. But no, it was just. I think it was like just being really aware of like that. Realistically, will, will probably sink, and we don't want to sink our it's actors. Not worth it. Yeah. So they built a new one, but they exactly modeled after ours, even the sail. That's why the shots that we shot in the wide still work, because our sail was the same. How did you end up, I'm guessing this is a Nebraska connection, but Nigel is your DP? Look. Yeah. Yeah. What? He's a badass. He is a badass. Your movie looks like... <laughs> like a movie. No like shit. Like a movie. Beautiful. Yeah. Wow. Nigel and his, um, his camera operator is his wife, so they're a husband-wife team. Um, Jack. And she's beautiful too. Yeah, they're r s both super talented. Yeah. We threw a lot at them, and they delivered. Yeah. Um, through the connections, I think it was just a, a lucky time and space thing. I don't know that anybody yeah. knew them previous. Uh -uh. No, because they hadn't. They they didn't do Nebraska. They did a season two of 
that show True that Detective. I wrote. True Detective. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, he did a film called The Tree that was lit really, really, really well, sort of how we wanted to light ours and talked to him on the phone. And Mike's more of a camera guy than I am. I'm more of a, a, f- a feeler. And uh, He just got it. Yeah, he just got it. He's great. So what were some of the concept shots that y'all were going for? I mean, I know it's a travel movie, so you guys want to have that movement. So funny because we never, I never considered it a travel film until recent, like recently. So I was like, oh, it's, a, it's a buddy yeah. travel film. I was like, oh, it is. But kind of like an Odyssey thing too. The, we did talk a lot about, um, there's Westerns, a lot of big wides in Westerns, but we wanted to do it in the South. A Southern. A Southern. So that was, Nigel really got that. And he's like, oh yeah, anamorphic, wide open, um, big skies. And then close-ups for the emotion um and the the camera movement was really composed classic disney wow <laughs> well, gorgeous stuff i was amazed at how well it looked as tyler dies <laughs> that's terrible um <laughs> uh let's talk about um a that gunshot i don't want to tell anything more than it because yeah. i think it's one of the funniest things in the whole movie yes um, yeah we can oh talk it about is it. yeah yeah it's in the trailer twice well let's talk about not only that but um it is yeah. like special effects and you guys had some really interesting stuff i mean the the atomic throw at the mm-hmm. end and yeah. there, well, there's some little we'll hints yeah yeah so uh our world <laughs> we wanted it to be really rooted in truth and also elevated um a little bit magical realism and if you do magical realism once you kind of got to do it a couple or three times. Yeah, there's rules. There's rules when you're writing things. Like you can't just surprise. Like there's got to. You have to set people up so something happens at the end that's um, almost unbelievable in a, its own beautiful way. But you need to literally and figuratively bend the rules of gravity somewhere else for that to feel rooted. You're writing a contractor yeah. with the audience. Yeah. Um, so that gunshot was pivotal for us to have the yeah. other thing work. And it gives permission for the thing at the end. There's one that we lost. I forget what, what it was, where it was another like moment where it was like a little bit like, huh, just a twist. You want to hint at it. Mm-hmm. Hint at what's coming. We're in a different world. It's a movie. It's, it's, mm-hmm. it's make-believe, so we can do whatever we want. But So long as we set those rules, yeah. I don't want to ask a God question, but mm-hmm. I'm curious, is there in any element of, not a higher power, but like Jasper's character is amazing. Thank you. Yeah, Wayne DeHart. He he's wonderful. Beautiful scene with him, um, with the the baptism especially. Yeah. Um, but is there something with that and the magic realism at all, or no? That's separate. I think they're all in the same movie. I think they're all connected. Here's what I'll say, and I'm careful when I talk about this. Um, I think it's all connected, literally and on a, on a, in a good way. Um, what we wrote came from us. I have a, I have my own beliefs and things and earth and God and stuff. And I don't, you know, I don't know how to put words to it without making it feel blasphemous or making it, you know, talk about it because then it can leave sort of thing. Um, but I think it's in the film a lot and I know it came through a lot. And uh, even the imagery we use, we wanted not consciously fully, but sort of consciously and subconsciously for things to feel um, biblical in scale. And, and uh, but, but not, I mean, I'm a Jewish guy from North Carolina, so I'm not like a, you know. I'm like, the Jewish guy from Israel. I think yeah, I yeah. Um, so that, that, if that very loosely um, can give any shape to something, I've, I think when you watch it, I believe that people feel something deep deep within their souls that um could feel like uh something like that and that's probably there for a reason it definitely elevated it yeah i want to thank y'all for putting that in there because it never felt preachy Mm -hmm. but it was yeah it put it to a slightly another level the jasper moment was beautiful yeah its own little it could have been its own little movie amen and we got like staple singers too like staple singers are Mm -hmm. like it's interesting like the music we chose was like they sing about higher powers and like I, I love I love the they're calling out to a higher power those you know that that family and um, yeah I think it's really special I wouldn't talk about too much but probably gone too far well I'll switch subject then I'll, uh, now that you guys have tackled feature film mm-hmm. 
what's next? Like, are y'all triple features? That no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like, are you guys writing together? Yeah, so? we stay. We, yeah, we. I have no. I have no interest in in making stuff without Mike. And in as long, and I know he feels the exact same. So, um, right? Yeah. The look he gave. Yeah. Is terrible, isn't it? <laughs> right. Um, yeah, we wrote a TV show. Uh, we um, are shopping around with Warner Brothers scooped it up we're doing it with Margot Robbie's company and we got another movie Lucky Chap or something yeah, yeah Lucky yeah, Chap yeah. they're we so saw, dope we saw I, Tanya. have you seen I, Tanya? yeah yeah. we walked out of that theater I was sobbing I like, laid down on the ground crying people were like what the fuck is going on I was like call them if anybody will let us work with them ever we need to do it yeah we went and pitched them a TV show and they're like we'll take it we love it it's amazing uh, and we wrote another film this winter mm-hmm. that we're gonna probably we're looking at doing and shopping around and um the tv space will be really interesting it'll be a, a new horizon for us and a new like rhythm to storytelling and storytelling on a on a on a timeline you know like it's not feature film it's not like uh mm-hmm. doesn't really have a ton of time to ruminate from what i hear so it'll be really f- interesting to kind of get into that world but try to bring a cinematic quality to it mm-hmm. can we get an update on where zach what's on his going on in his life i mean yeah, okay. we don't we don't truly meet the real Zach, so I'd love to know the real Zach. Of course, from yeah. Um, the real Zach has been studying theater forever, and this he's always wanted to be as close as he could to movies, and he's works in a movie theater, and the movie theater has just started showing the trailer. So he is like helping people to their seats, and when they show the Peanut Butter Falcon trailer and come out and they go, was that your movie? You're in a movie with Shia LaBeouf and Dakota Johnson? Yes, I am. Uh, yes, I am. That's my movie. It's so awesome um so he's getting out and doing some press like we are you know he's he's the star of this movie and he um he got a manager he's looking at doing future work continuing to study and take classes and he's also not really swayed you know he doesn't get a big head or an ego he's just a like a really centered dude did he come up with the title or was that before it kind of came from the ethers yeah I think we, it was just all the three of us were hanging out, and the title just came. Yeah. Can we talk about the outfit? Yeah. Who, who that was badass when he came out. It was yeah. like, oh shit, Mick Foley's gonna. He's, he's, it's perfect. I kind of want to not talk about it, just yeah. for protection of um, the story. The, that the sort of the third act we're trying to not talk yeah. about. No, no, no offense to you. Yeah. No, no, it's. Yeah. You put it in there, it's worth it. Yeah. People need to see it. I, I've made a bunch of costumes like that before, and it was one of those moments where we just, I was like, we have an hour, just it'll look like this, and then duct tape and stuff. And, our, and, and Pat's Pat story, Pat story is, is really fucking phenomenal. What is this? He worked for, was it Guar? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. The guys that eat people. Yeah, Guar. He had done all the costumes for Guar. That's gnarly. I totally forgot about that. That's a good story element yeah, right there. Whole, like rock star costumes. Wow, amazing. Don't Google it, but do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's plenty of YouTube videos of it. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I'll, I'll veer away from the third act, but I would love to know when you guys watch it now, uh-huh. do you see anything different each time you watch it? Or how do you feel every time you see the film? I'll answer that for me. Every time. I'm st- I still could sit and watch it. I've never seen it. 300 times and I still love it I could sit and watch it it holds my attention I love the turns like if if people like it one one hundredth as much as I do like it'll do great you know but yeah I love it there's all there's little there's details like when they're working on the thing there's two donkeys in the background and it makes me think of two jackasses and um, and Pinocchio and the boys on the island and like the, you know it's just so it's, there's little things that just tickle me you know to death I love it yeah I'm, I'm right around 300 watches as well and I'm still, uh, just like I said earlier, really proud of the performances. And when I get to see, sometimes I'll notice something that Dakota did that I didn't notice before. Same. And I really yeah. appreciate, I'm so grateful that everybody works so hard on telling the story. And I see different pieces of that every time I watch. Well, guys, thank you, A, for bringing this back to Texas. I know South by was a wonderful experience, but yes. bringing it here to Dallas, yes. we appreciate that. Um, and I can't wait for people to see this. I was blown away. I think I cried like three times. Uh, when Shia started crying, I was like, oh, shit, and the brother yeah, and the John yeah. Bernard. I was like, oh. But 
thank you guys for making this, and I hope this peanut butter falcon flies high as hell. Thank you. It's very special. Thank, thank you, guys. You. Yeah.